Hi, welcome to another edition of Rob's Mailbag here on SB Nation's YouTube channel. Um, as always, I'm answering your questions. Uh, please feel free to send me some questions for next week's mailbag. The email address is robsmailbag at sbnation.com. And let's get the right into it. First question from Chad in Atlanta. Rob, can you comment on when you think we might see line line calls and trap catch calls become reviewable in terms of the technology needed to make it happen at all of the ballparks? Well, Chad, um, as it happens, uh, when I was in Kansas City for the All-Star Game, I attended a, a uh, media session with Bud Selig, and one of the first questions was about this very thing. Um, and I'll tell you exactly what Bud Selig said. We're going to expand instant replay when we have the technology. The appetite for more instant replay is very low everywhere. And when asked about the technology, um, Selig mentioned the cameras and the different angles that, that need to be collected for all the different calls. And then Joe Torrey, who was also there, weighed in and said um, they were studying studying the addition of an extra umpire. Um, he mentioned the grounders over the bag are not easy, which is true. I mean, even if you're watching, when you watch a game, um, that's maybe the one thing that the cameras have a real tough time with is those balls that might or might not have crossed the bag. And then Torrey said something else, which I thought was the most interesting thing maybe that I heard the entire session. Torrey said, I don't know why we want everything to be perfect. Life isn't perfect. Well, true. I think we do want the umpires to be perfect. At least I do. Um, most fans do, I think, within reason. Uh, as far as the technology, um, I think the technology is basically already there. No, not for the balls over the bag. Those are incredibly difficult. Um, but how often do those plays happen? Maybe once a month, every couple of months. Um, the, the balls down the lines, um, the line drives, I mean, um, those happen far more, far more often. The trapped balls, more often even than that. I think those are the most common calls that are, that are questionable. And generally, the replay shows those plays very well. The real issue is, is clearing things with the umpires. And we might have more video review already for the umpires. Next question is from Adam in LA. Adam asks, Rob, will the Baltimore Orioles ever get their due respect as a legit contender? As of today, they own the best record in one-run games, 19-6, and six, and are only six back of the first-place Yankees. Well, Adam, you, you mentioned their record in one-run games as if that were a positive. It's not. Um, it suggests that they've been lucky. Uh, and they almost certainly can't sustain that sort of performance. The Orioles have been outscored by 44 runs this season. Only three teams have a worse run differential. The Twins minus 90, the Royals minus 51, and the Indians minus 47. The Orioles simply can't remain as contenders if they don't play a lot better than they've played. Fundamentally, leaving aside the wins and the losses with 51 and 44, they're also tied with the, with the A's for the second wild card spot. By the way, they've won five in a row as I speak, which is impressive, no question, but they just have to play a lot better than they've played. Can they do that? Well, I wouldn't put it past them, necessarily. Maybe if Zach Britton is for real, and the other young pitchers, or some of them anyway, pitch exceptionally well down the stretch. I mean, we've seen stranger things, no question. But right now, I don't even rate them as a solid contender for one of the wild cards. As I wrote today, the Rays, the Red Sox, the second place team in the NL Central, whoever that is, and the A's, I think all have better shots at at one of the wild card spots than, than the Orioles do. It'd be a great story. They just have to play better. Next question is from Jay. Jay writes, actually two questions. Why is no one discussing two major things? One, John Lester's extreme road and home splits, and two, CC Sabathia's drop in velocity. So let me talk about Sabathia first. I'm actually not all that concerned about Sabathia. It would be great if he were still throwing, averaging 94 with his fastball. He's not. He's averaging around 92 this season. But it's hard to really care a whole lot about that because he's pitching exactly as well as he did a year ago. His strikeout-to-walk ratio is, is, it is exactly the same. About 3.8 strikeouts for every walk, which is an outstanding figure. His first two years with the Yankees, 2009-2010, were not exceptional, exceptional seasons 
by his standards. They were good good years, not great. He got better somehow last year in his third year with the Yankees, and this year he's just as good. What I suspect is that he's he's still throwing as hard as he wants to throw. It's just that he doesn't want to throw quite as hard, and he doesn't need to. At, at 92 miles an hour, he can be highly successful, and of course he can dial it up above 92 um, it, when he wants to. I think he's just perhaps pacing himself a little bit. Um, maybe throwing more two-seamers, which is going to obviously uh, result in a slower average fastball speed. Um, I just don't think his arm strength is is diminished to the point where where anyone should worry about him, especially considering uh, just how successful he's been this year. Um, aside from being out for those two weeks with the injury, um, he's been he's been fantastic, and uh, I, I think he's going to I think he's going to win 300 games. Um, you know, that's not a sure thing, but I think it's at least 50 50, maybe better. As far as Lester's home road splits, I mean, they, they are uh, significant. Um, he's giving up a 332 batting average at home, 230 on the road. Massive difference in slugging percentage, um, mainly because, well, the batting average first, but also 12 home runs allowed at home, uh, four on the road. But my personal opinion is that. This is not a long-term consideration. So lifetime, Lester's been actually quite good at home. Not quite as good as on the road. I mean, Fenway Park can be a tough place to pitch. The numbers are roughly equivalent. 735 OPS allowed at home. 672 on the road. And if you take this season out, not that you necessarily should, but if you if you were to take the season out, they would be basically the same. Um, I think it's a, it's a one-season fluke. Um, which can that sort of thing can easily happen, considering that Lester's made um, what, 12 starts at home, eight starts on the road. It's just not a big enough sample size. And I actually think that Lester's going to be fine. I mean, he got absolutely destroyed yesterday, Sunday. His uh, ERA went way up. But on a fundamental level, his numbers this year are not that different in terms of strikeouts and walks than in his better seasons. It's just been uh, a tough season luck-wise. He's given up a 332 batting average on balls in play, which is exceptionally high. Um, he's given up a few extra home runs. But I really don't believe that he is a fundamentally different pitcher than he's been. He's throwing just as hard as ever. 93 miles an hour on his fastball. 90 miles an hour on his cutter. Strikeouts and walks, close. Uh, the home runs are up, but that's an extra, what, five or six long fly balls? Again, as you point out, most of them at home. So I think that just as the Orioles' record in close games is actually a negative uh, marker, um, I would say that when you look at Lester's numbers, it's actually a positive number marker when you look at everything. Um, and it's a, what I should say is it's a positive marker for the Red Sox future. I think that he and Beckett both are capable of pitching quite well down the stretch, August and September. And for that reason, I'm not, not ready to give up on the Red Sox yet, even though they are on a rough pet in a rough stretch right now. Um, just lost three in a row. Didn't look good doing it. Last place in the AL East. But um, I think they still have a, a legitimate shot at the wild card. And uh, while they probably won't win because there are a number of teams they have to compete with, uh, they have about as good a shot at it as anybody else, uh, the second wild card, as anybody else in the league. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That's uh, today's mailbag. Love to see you next week. Again, the email address is robsmailbag at sbnation.com. And um, see you next week. It'll be right before the trade deadline. Should have plenty to talk about. Take care, everybody. Thanks.